Hello painter friends, it's Sarah for Chroma Yachty. Welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be showing you how I mix large batches of paint. I know that some of you haven't quite ventured into the world of making large pour art, um, but when you do get there, one of the first things you're going to encounter is how do I mix a lot of the same color consistently? I have a large commission piece that I'm about to get started on, so I thought I would take you through that process. So some of you may have done some commission work, some of you may not. One of the first things I do after I've had a lot of discussions with a client is actually make them sketches. That way we're just all on the same page as far as what the style of the painting is going to be and the overall color scheme. This is obviously going to be like a fraction of the size of what they're going to get. So I, I make it very clear that this is purely just a sketch. With pour art, you really don't know what you're going to get or where things are exactly going to end up. Um, but I just like to do this to include them in the process and make sure that we're all on the same page before I take the time of making a larger piece. So when I make these sketches, I tend to mix, you know, a smaller cup of paint like you guys are usually used to making. I try to keep it around, you know, only like four ounces. I don't want to overdo it. That way, if they change their mind about the paint colors, I, I don't have a ton of leftover wasted paint or it's really easy to just add or change this. The next step is kind of calculating how much paint I think I'm going to need across all the canvases. For the pieces I'm about to work on that are very large, I'm thinking I'm going to need about two containers this size of this color. Um, I will put the link to all of this stuff below, but I found these cups to be really helpful because they have all kinds of measurements on there. As some of you know, I am not really one to weigh my paint. I like to just kind of eyeball it and cups with measurements on them are super helpful. So if I need this much of this color, the first thing I do is try to split it evenly and use it as a base. So it looks like there's about two ounces of paint total. So before I try to add to this in any way, I like to make a couple of quick little swatches. And then this way I have something to compare this color to. For this painting, the base is this hooker's green. So you can see, I just try to kind of evenly put that color in each one. So this has some blue in it. It has some olive green in it as well. I don't know how many of you have used a metallic black, but I really like to use metallics in, mixed in with a lot of my paints. It just gives like a little extra sparkle when it dries. And especially if you put resin or varnish on it and it shines in the light, it just really gives it a little bit more life. So then I'm gonna be mixing each one. Mix these up really good. Make sure you're scraping your sides. You know, some of you may have noticed in the description of my videos, I say I use a three to one ratio of Floetrol to paint. So what I'm gonna be trying to do now is to add enough paint to where I get about a third of the cup with paint before I add any Floetrol or water or anything. For me, that's just the consistency that I like and that's the way I work. See how close we're kind of getting to that color. We need a little bit more blue and a little bit more black. I'm gonna need more paint overall, so. Some of you may have watched me do this trick in another video. It's a really great way to make sure that you get all of your paint. You see how much extra's in there? Look at that. Just by cutting it in half, you can get all that extra. Look, there's even more in there too, see? 
don't worry if these two aren't perfectly the same color. I have a solution for that before we get too deep into this. Just hang on a minute. We're just trying to get them pretty close. So I felt like I needed a little bit more blue. A little bit more of the olive. Definitely more black. I always recommend too, before you start a bigger piece, especially, or if you're ever just even experimenting with new colors, do a little tiny test and, and let it dry overnight because paint in general tends to dry darker. And you'd be surprised sometimes what that looks like the next day after you've let it dry. I think so I always do lots of tests. I know I don't really show that on camera ever, but I do lots of tests prior to ever starting any painting, really. See how close we're getting now? If you drop it right next to it, you can really see, oh, well, that's almost identical. That's awesome. All right, now that I have three ounces of each paint color, I'm gonna test them against each other, see how good I did at dropping paint in there evenly. Just kind of tend to drop one in there. Now look. Pretty identical, which is awesome. They don't look identical, that's okay. Solution, you dump one into the other, stir them up really, really good, and then split them back up. So now to get the rest of the amount of paint I need, I'm gonna be adding some Floetrol. Always mix up your Floetrol between uses. It tends to separate and get weird. You don't want that ended up in your cup, so give it a good shake. And then to make sure you don't get any goobers in there, I put one of these little caps on there. I'll link to that on Amazon as well. And now I'm gonna be filling this up the rest of the way to the like 10 ounce mark right there on each of them. And I'm gonna give them both a good stir before I add in my water to thin. Usually when I mix this paint, I tend to mix it the day before. Um, that way all the air bubbles and everything have time to settle. So I'm not just getting like a ton of extra cell reaction that I'm not expecting. You do always wanna at least wait a couple of hours. If you can't wait overnight, I get it. And sometimes I do mix stuff and straight up use it, but you can definitely end up with a lot more air bubbles in it than you expect if you just straight use it and don't let it sit. So this consistency right now, is that a pretty thick still? Cause it doesn't have very much water in it. Slightly thinner than a ring pour at the moment but I want it even thinner than that. I'm gonna be doing a cup pour and some swiping. And I like those consistencies to be somewhere in between where it currently is and a Dutch pour, which is pretty thin. And this is filtered water. I just use an old water bottle. You wanna to try to use filtered water if you can to add to your paint because there's no impurities in it. Any, there's nothing in it that's gonna screw with your paint. The more factors like that you can eliminate, the better. Now I'm just looking to make sure the consistencies are the same. Just gonna take one last test against my original samples. Yep, still right on, awesome. You see, this is kind of the final consistency I'm going for. Now, before I'll actually get started on the paintings, what I'm gonna do is mix all of my paint and then test all of it as well. Every version of every color I have against each other. I do a drip test, make sure they're all about the same consistency, as close as I can get them. And then I also test whatever technique I'm gonna be using on another piece of poster board 
or mixed media paper. You want a thicker paper for paint. Um, but I test them with the technique that I'm gonna be doing just to triple check that everything is mixed properly and there aren't gonna be any surprises. And that's it, thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this video helpful. As always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments below and stay tuned to see how these paintings turn out. Ha <laughs> ha